Hey everybody, what's going on? Shabby Do here, and today I wanted to give you a different type of shabby experience. We're getting into Stardew Valley, but it is the board game of Stardew Valley that just released the other day. I just got my copy in the mail, and honestly, this one kind of caught me by surprise. Obviously, saw the I saw the tweet about it. I had a buddy tell me about it, so that's what made me look into it. And obviously, I had to buy it. I could have just not. So I wanted to just kind of open it up with you guys and see what you guys thought of this game as well. And what we know, it is a game for one to four players. It's co-op, so it's not like a versus type game. And obviously the cover just looks awesome. It looks super cute as usual. Uh, here's the top. Yeah, that's me. Make sure you guys can see the right orientations here. Yeah, all the same across. And then the back. A little hard to see. Hold it up a little bit to, for you guys. So... What we can see here is help wanted. You've inherited your grandfather's old farm plot in Stardew Valley. Armed with hand-me-down tools and a few coins, you set out on a new adventure for a new life. Stardew Valley, the board game, is a cooperative experience for one to four players. Work together to fulfill your grandpa's goals and restore the once vibrant community center. If you succeed, the valley will flourish. But if you fail, Jojo Corporation will move in and the magic will fade. Plant crops, raise animals, upgrade your farm, meet the locals, make new friends, maybe find love. Forge the woods, fish the waters, explore the mines. It's, we're, 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 we're playing Stardew Valley here, people, okay? One to four players, 13 and up. It says about 45 minutes per player. So uh, even when you buy the game online, it warns you that if you're a, a, a casual board gamer or whatever, that if you only want to spend like a quick amount of time playing a game, they even tell you not to buy it. So it, it's going to be a good experience with uh, longevity and replayability. So let's... uh. Let's take this up here, and I gotta do this backwards. It feels weird. Let's just put this over here. I'll put it right here where my mouse is. There we go. Stardew Valley, right over there, out of my way. So we got a nice little rule book here. Tells us the objectives and everything. Glossy. It's it's good quality. It's not cheap, and it it looks really good. It looks great too. Let me. I've got my camera, like, way over here so you guys can see what I'm seeing, but, you know, it looks nice. So here we go. We've got some JoJo tiles right here on the bottom. And it, it looks like they're um, penalties. So, like, one of them says, feed shortage. When you collect from animals, roll only one die. Cost increase. The cost to buy animals is increased by three gold, etc. And then it looks like there's some normal ones. So we've got our... Oh, it looks like it's our, our farming buildings here, as you can see. We've got the silo, we've got the coop, we've got the farmhouse, etc. And they all have different things. So like the mill, all crops planted in fields or in player inventories will always turn up quality side up. So that must mean the qualities of the crops are hidden. Put that over here and here oh, look at them they're so cute i want that duck so you can see we've got our nice cute animals here flip it over lost lost the tile already so there's some more jojo cards up there and we've got our animals as well so it looks like we get these once they hatch we flip it over and we can see we've got like cows are worth eight coin we get milk chicken six and we get eggs sheep ten Etc. Etc. Okay. Nice quality too. Like it's not the cheap cardboard stuff. It's really nice. It's like nice and thick. Good punch outs. Like let's punch a coin out here. You ready? The coins are a little off center, but here we go. So, so here's a coin. Put on my palm. Looks real nice. It's solid. It's thick. I don't know if you can see how thick that is from there, but, you know, nice and thick. And they're all like this. The hearts here, a stack of 10 coins. Move that over here so I don't lose it. And we've got a fishing spot. We've got a farming spot. It's a profession. Profession farming, profession fishing. Starting tools, it looks like we've got four spots to put, or six spots to put things here. Here, you know, I'll hold one up while I look at the other for you guys, too. Pop that out. So, right, right here, I know you can't really read it too well, but 
you know, it says profession, what the profession does for you. Like, so for the fishing one I'm reading down here, it says the profession makes it easier to catch fish and always allows you, or, and allows you to gain other rewards while fishing. And it looks like we've got upgrades. Ooh, I'm switching. It looks like we've got some upgrades over here as well as item slots. So those are nice. Real thick too. And then the back shows us all our tools. Probably our inventory. Maybe that's we pick a profession when we start the game. We'll check the rules after. That's nice. And then over there we've got ghost crystals and hematite. So it looks like we got some artifacts as well. We've also got the cat or the dog. So on the back here, we've got the dog. The reverse side, we've got the cat. Same with the artifacts, too. Then we've got the Elvish jewelry and the Nautilus fossil on the back as well. So it looks like we're just going right along here. We've got other artifacts on the side here. We've got the profession for foraging and mining as well. We've got five gold coins down here at the bottom. We've got some more artifacts. It looks... It must be based on like how you dig them up because like these ones on the back here are brown colored so like dwarf gadget and fan whereas these front ones are are green and it so shows a green ore whereas these show a brown cog oh god look at these oh let's pop one of these out look we got duck feather right here oh so thick you hear that it's not bending. That's a good... The, the, I'm impressed with the quality here. It's really good. So, looking at it, here's like a duck feather. Obviously a little hard to see. Same thing front and back. One's worth two coins. The other is worth three coins because it's got a little quality star next to it. I guess this is a brown... A brown? A bronze quality duck feather. And it's the same thing for all these other ones on here. It looks like we've got like chewing sticks, arrowheads. We've got more artifacts on here. We've got some. Yep, we've got. So it's like, again, it's all the green crystals here. It's all the brown cog gatherables on the back here, which we'll check and see what the differences are, as well as a grading scale. We've got question mark A down to, I see B on here and C. That over here, we'll keep our duck feather. We've got our animal byproduct on there, like our duck feathers, our goat's milk. And here we've got some farming crops at the top. Looks like it's got like a water amount here, as well as a gold quantity. Strawberries, potatoes, parsnips. We've got our star fruit. We've got our blueberries, bok choy, cranberries, eggplants, more eggs. It's the same thing on the back. We've got our quality goods there. And then the same thing here. So these must be the dig spots. So let me hold this up for you guys. I can see the dig spots on here as well as well as harvestables. So holding that up for you guys to see. You can see with the earthworms there, you got one that has the green crystal and you've got one with the brown cog. So depending on which one of these we find must be the ones that we get to is the tile side that we get. Also, I got some iridium ore and parsnips on the back of this one. Oh, you know what? It's it's a G Omni Geode on the front, and on the back it was a Iridium ore. And then there's just some it's some blank tiles too, on the back side, different colors. So it's like stone is on a brown background, etc. So now we've got we've got our insects. We've got some fish on here. We've got different types of trees, and it's different seasons: spring, summer, fall. We've got our bug meat, so it looks like we're going in the mines here. That, again, it's just such great quality. Real good quality, and I'm, I won't go through... Oh, it's the last one. So now, now we've got all the fish on this last one. We've got treasure chests here. Oh, there's even uh, the legendary fish. we got the legend fish, we got the angler, the crimson fish, the glacier fish. Man, God, just such... I'm still so impressed by the quality here. It just feels so nice. Not cheap. Obviously, it looks like it comes with like a little... This is cheap. Little, uh... 
little cheap plastic kind of holder to put all these tiles in. But hey, it's something, right? Ooh. Oh, man, there's even more down there. So here is the board. See if I got enough room here for you guys. Just doing this right on my desk for you. Look at that. Yeah, let's uh, go on top of my other stuff over there. Look at this board. It's the whole town. Got our letters up here. I'm reading it upside down. We've got, you know, collect from animals. Buy animals here. Lake fishing. Explore the mines. Buy buildings. But I know there's dice involved. We're going to flip it around so I can uh, read it to you guys here. So... These are the community center at the top, the crafts room, pantry, fish tank, bulletin board, the vault, and the boiler room. Levels, property of the adventure guild, so ore types, geotypes, and inhabitants. Maps of the adventure guild, so we put in some cards here. When you reach level 12 in the mine, gain an epic item. When you restore a room, gain an item. When you restore the last room, gain an epic item. We got the fish track down here. So if a legendary fish would be discarded by fish track movement, return it to the bag instead. Rule books telling me season card discard here. The museum, so we're collecting. Oh, so those are the, the rankings on there. It looks like we need like an A through F, H, I mean, A through H type item. So fill slots A, B, C, and D to gain epic. E, F, G, H to gain an epic item. And then end of turn effects, build stairs, pet animals, remove Joja, and upgrade a starting tool. Okay. Crows here, so it looks like our crops can be eaten as well. Ah, all right, let's leave this. This is beautiful. This. Pretty standard, like, quality kind of kind of game here. Good thickness to it. Nothing crazy. It's nice. Comes with a decent little, what, like, felt kind of bag. Put some stuff in there. Another little uh, blue one. Cute. Goes down here. Here we've got some cards, so let's uh, pop these open. Ah, oh, perfect. They knew. They got the shabby do piece right here, guys. You ready? Look, it's the purple one. I'll have to take that out of the bag after. I would have had to return it if there was no purple player. Yeah, unplayable. Absolutely unplayable at that point, right? So, it looks like we've got cards for the seasons here. Like, this is a letter card. What? Expand the farm. So, we've got winter season cards. Let you see those right there. We've got summer. Spring. And fall. Right there. And then there's a card for the last day of each season as well. Which tells us, uh, you know, like, so spring has entered. Place new trees and forageable tiles. Draw two profession upgrades and keep one. Draw the next season card. So obviously, you know, the game's going to have to start with spring, summer, then fall, and then maybe it ends in the winter, or maybe it kind of keeps going. We'll see. Put those over there. Those look nice. We've got the dice over here. Oh, these are pretty. Let's get some cute little pictures on them here. Let's show this to you guys. So. Oh, they're all a little different. So we've got animal dice. We've got, assuming this has to do with like crops or something, because I've got, we've got a Junimo on here. We've got hearts and the other one, there's a, a star fruit on it as well. What's this? We've got three animal dice and three star fruit dice. Gotta hold that up here for you guys. So you, like you got the hearts, a Jojo, and oops, my my fat fingers are in the way. There we go. Uh, and then the star fruit. 
There's three of those. Then you've got an animal dice with a duck, a sheep, or is that the cow? That's the cow. That's the sheep. And a chicken. Dice are cute. Put those right there. So it looks like we've got mail. So we get mail from the villagers. That's awesome. It, it really feels like we're playing Stardew. Just like looking at all these different things in here, right? So. Pulling these out. These are... It. There's just a couple of them. So these are some mail tiles here. It looks like they'll go probably up here, right? So they must be things to really help out. So it oh, so maybe these are maybe these are um, goals that we have to do throughout to kind of win the game or do things. Because like one of them says. Explore the mines, reach the bottom of the mine, level 12. P.S. Don't forget stone can be used to craft staircases. Catch legendary fish equal to the number of players. You don't have to keep them, just catch them. Have 10 gold per player by the end of the game. So maybe some bonus objectives. Cute. Put those right there. Keep an eye on those for me. So the next ones, these are the levels, the property of the Adventures Guild that we saw right here. They look the same as the maps. There we go. You know what I'm going to do? Without hopefully spilling everything here. Oh, God, I'm going to spill it all. Hold on. I want to flip the board around so you guys can keep seeing it rather than having me look at it. Because I think that would be better for you guys. There we go. Don't need to keep all these out here anymore. Dropping things everywhere, it's fine. Not a controlled space. The dogs will come in and wreck it all anyways. Alright, so we've got all of our season cards again. Just a couple of these last day of season cards. And here's the fall. Put those up here again. And then we have the level cards. So with these... So ore types, geotypes, inhabitants. So if I flip one, so it must be like when we get to the level of a mine, right? We're going to pick one of these cards, I'm assuming. I like to guess games on how they work by just pulling out the stuff before we look at the rules. So, you know, level two, nothing happens. There's green slime. It looks like we've got ore and geodes. So level card. Helps if I have it flipped the right way for you guys. Right there, level two. And where my fingers are, there's geode and ore. It just says slime, and where that little skull was, it says nothing happens. Levels here. Take another look at another one. Level 10, replace the map card. We've got red sludge and the metal head, and it tells us for the ores, we've got copper, iron, gold, and iridium, and geodes are the regular, ice, fire, and omni. You know, so we got one of those guys. Looks pretty nice. Let's take a look at one more. Don't spoil too much, right? So right here, level six. So actually, you know what? These must go in order. I don't know why they're face down. If I don't know what the point would be to have them face down if they're supposed to be in order. So like level one, yeah, level two, all the way to 12. So yeah, they're definitely supposed to go in order. All right, and now we've got the map pieces. So, map, property of the Adventure Guild. Be careful down there. So, this must be... And these look random. Yep, they are random. So, you know, you'd get a random card here. Flip it over, I'm assuming. And we can see that this is what the map looks like. So, we must move along these. We've got stairs to go down. It looks like we got um, death in the middle there. We got rocks. We've got ore. Looks like we've got geodes to crack. So, interesting. Absolutely interesting. Yeah, we've got a door on some of these as well. Bug meat. I'm sure you all know what that looks like. And you know what? What I'll do is I'll flip up one of these as well for you guys so you can see what it looks like on here. 
Oh, it's a little hard to see. All right, and then it looks like we've got villager tiles here as well. So, so we got a villager card. And, you know, flipping the first one, we've got Marnie. Uh, gain one random animal product, roll the die to determine. And they've got, like, little flavor text on them. Animals are so innocent, so sweet, and if I don't look after them, who will? Let's see. Let's find. Aha, here, here we go. Pam. Spring birthday plus a heart. Uh, peek at the top of the villager deck. It's a rotten world, kid. Keep your head screwed on tight. So we got Pam right there. We all love Pam. See, who's everyone's number one wife a week? Or, or husbando? A lot of people like Sebastian. Let's take a look at... Hold on. Let's see. I'm trying to think of, like, who everyone's favorite is. Ah. It's got to be this one here. Spring birthday. Plus a heart. It looks like... Oh, and it tells you, like, what they like to receive. Love, perhaps. Loves crops, hates mushrooms, ore, and stone. And farming sounds like such a drag. What do you even do all day? Gain three gold. Who can you can you guys guess who that is? Come on, who would hate farming and would be obsessed with money? Yeah, you got it. That's our girl Haley. So those are our villager tiles. So those are cool. Wondering. Season card disposal. I don't see a spot, but I could have it hidden right now, too. Where our villagers go on here. It's all right. I'm going to go right there for the moment. Flip these around so you can see them. But yeah, we still got more cards in here. We've got... Here, let's open this one up now. We've got item cards in here. And I can see... Ah. Farm placeables as well, so like our smaller buildings that we craft ourselves, like our crafting stations. Like I see a beehive on the bottom. We've got item cards right there. And so, you know, we got like a mega bomb discard well at the mine to trigger three grid spaces. Straw hat, keep. Reduce heart token cost of revealing or replacing bundles by one. The auto grabber. Collect from each of your animals. No roll required. Yield snack. Discard during your turn. Take an extra action. I feel like you all know what these will look like here. And then we've got, you know, Bee House. So these are, what do they call them? Ah, so forging. Profession upgrades. Got like a whole stack of profession upgrades for mining, foraging, fishing, farming. You know, like fishing magnet. Once per action, when you catch any fish, gain a heart token. Hardwood. When you collect wood via movement, gain additional wood from the board. So we've got some cool little things here to play with as well. Grab these down here. So we got our item cards as well. As profession upgrades for each profession. And I've got one more st stack of things here. Got some event cards, it looks like, maybe for the professions themselves. So we first of all we've got the mine event. So it's like staircase, you may descend a stair. And <clears throat> underground lake, gain any two tiles from the fish track. Friendship, gain two heart tokens. Mine upgrade, gain a random mine upgrade. So we've got some mining upgrades here. Ah, so here's our, so that's like our mining event. We've got epic items, so spoilers. Uh, return scepter, before taking an action on your turn, you may change your location to any space. Solid gold Lewis, draw five villagers and choose anyone to keep as a friend. Discard the others. Now, I know what you all, you all are diehard Sc Stardew Valley fans, but you know, there's Gold Lewis. We have to show Gold Lewis. We've got epic items here. The mermaid pendant attached to a friend that displays the mermaid pendant icon. See rulebook 23. Then we've got events. So we got making friends. Players may redistribute their friends to other players so we can sell our friends. Excellent. Awesome to know. Really love that. Found a lost book. An old farmer's journal. A starting player gains a random farming upgrade. Visit the spa. 
Starting player may immediately take one bonus action from any location. The cards look really cute, too. Like, here, here's the spa. A little hard to see. Kind of got a little glare on it, too. Sorry. I'm not a uh, board game YouTuber very often, so my quality on this is going to be quite low. I just wanted to bring some exposure out. It looks like we got starting tools, pickaxes, fishing rods, hose, watering cans, etc. Plop those bad Larrys down right there. And then it looks like we've got the community center rooms, boiler room, bulletin board, fish tank, the pantry, the craft room. And it looks like we need to do things for it. So it's like one of the boiler room cards says any mineral that's green, boiler room, blacksmith, any ore. And then the other boiler room is adventurer, bug meat, the vault, 10 gold, other vault, eight gold, the other vault, six gold, bulletin board, fodder. Uh, heart plus any animal product, heart plus any fish, heart plus any mineral, etc. I don't want to give them all away. Put those right there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is everything in the box. There's just like a little separator in there. But wow, everything just looks awesome here. I'm going to grab the rule book on the bottom of our stack. Beautiful stuff. Take a sip of some Canada Dry. All right. So yeah, symbol reference sheet, crops, forageables. We all know what these mean. Go fishing. So the objective of the game is to complete four of Grandpa's goals and restore all six community center rooms before the season deck is exhausted, which marks the end of the year and the game. So you get one whole year to play the game. Instead of a thousand years like we do in real Stardew Valley. So we got to do four goals, which is where they go. I know I moved them somewhere. Right here, which is these hearts. So these are grandpa's goals. So like we were saying before, uh, like if we pick a couple random ones here, make friends. So have friends equal to three times the number of players. Expand the farm. Own buildings equal to the number of players. This is why it's harder for the amount of players, I'm assuming. Uh, explore the mine, reach the bottom of the mine, which is level 12. Catch legendary fish, save enough gold. Upgrade starting tools two times per player. Fill the museum slots equal to two times the number of players. Raise animals, own animals equal to two times the number of players. So those are some of the goals we have to complete for Grandpa. And then complete six bundles. One per room to restore the community center. So it looks like we only have to actually do like one of these. Uh, where are they? Right here. Looks like it says one per room. So like one boiler. So like the boiler would just be a mineral. I guess. Awesome. So, you know, just going on here. I'm going to bring this up here with you guys. I know it's upside down for you, but. So looking at this, you know, list of components we've got, you know, oh, so. They even label the bags. The artifact mineral bag is our little gray one right here. The blue one is the fishing bag. The tile tray, obviously our little plastic thing, is the, the supply. Forgeable tiles, etc. Set up the basic components. Place the board in the middle of the table. I'm already lost. Place beside it the stardew dice, the, the animal dice, and the spouse pawn. Oh, spouse pawn. Shuffle and place the following decks face down along with the stack of JoJo tiles. So, villagers, items, epic items, events, and mine events and JoJo tiles get shuffled and put down. Tile tray. Place the tile tray near the board. It contains resource tiles for crops, animals, and more. Place the two bags near the tile tray. Pull all artifacts and minerals into the gray bag and all the fish tiles into the blue bag. This is where you'll draw artifacts and minerals from. Artifacts, minerals, and fish when needed. Plant your first crop. Put one parsnip, a spring crop from the tile tray, in the f second field slot. So it's saying um, right here, but two's down this way. No, crops are double-sided. The front is normal and the back is quality. Crops are always planted normal side up. Plant forageables in trees. Mix the 11 spring forageable tiles and Put one face down in each foraging spot on the board. Place the four spring tiles on the tree spots. Leaf side up. Re place remaining forageables and trees nearby for future use. 
See which fish are in season. Draw five random tiles from the fishing bag and put one in each slot on the fish track. Always fill empty slots starting with the rightmost empty slot. So it looks like the fish are random, which is interesting. I would have liked to have seen the fish be static for the season, but, you know, it is what it is. The mine. Sort the mining deck by number so that one is on top and 12 at the bottom. Place this stack face up onto its space of the board so that level one is showing. Shuffle the map decks and draw a map. Place this reveal card face up on the board in its space next to the mine levels. Yep. Season deck. Build the season deck. And it's see details on the next page. For the first game, it's recommended that you only that you use only the standard season card. So there must be some special season cards in there. Community center. For each community center, draw one random bundle that matches the room. Do not look at it. Place each bundle face down in its matching room. Set the remaining cards aside as you most likely won't need them. So again, like we said earlier, one bundle, one room. Grandpa's goals. Shuffle the goals and draw four. Place these face up in Grandpa's letter at the top of the board. These are your goals for the game. Animals and buildings. Create two stacks of animal tiles near the left edge of the board, separated by type, coop, or barn animal. Place the coop and building tile on top of the coop animal card and the barn building tile on top of the barn animal stack. Randomly draw two other building tiles to place beside the coop and the barn. Return the rest to the box. All right. Player setup. Each player selects a player mat to determine their profession and takes that matching colored pawn. They each, oh, then each player chooses what starting tool deck to claim, watering can, hoe, fishing rod, or pickaxe, and places it on their player mat with a level zero face up. Huh, it looks like you get to choose which starter deck or starter tool you pick, regardless of your profession. So, like, you could be a fisher, but still grab the pickaxe, for instance. Okay. Pet token and starting gold. Whoever recommended playing the game chooses the starting player and gives them the pet token. The group decides which pet they prefer, cat or dog. Players collectively start with a total of gold. Okay. So, it says for building the sink. For the season deck for your first game, find the 16 standard season cards. Separate these by the season into four piles. So it looks like... Let me grab the fall ones here. If I look at them, must be on the other side. Yeah, so you can see here... On the front side up... Try and make that easy for you guys. You can see right there in your bottom right. You can see the words, a little hard to see. But in the bottom right where the little uh, Junimo is, it says standard. Standard season card. So that's what they're meaning by when they say you can choose a standard deck. And they even look different from the regular cards too. Yeah. So I'm guessing that makes the gameplay a little easier because it's recommended to do that on your first game. Turn them face down, randomized. Place each set of four on... Oh, wait. Turn the cards face down and randomize the order of each season's cards. Place each set of four on top of its matching season end card. Yep, also face down. Now you'll have four season piles, each with four season standard on top of a season end card. Stack them as shown below. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. Hmm, never would have guessed. Starting layout example. So this is like... I like how there's just an example. So it's like you can kind of do what you want. So hard tokens, gold tokens, forageable tiles, season tiles, your fishing bag, your random building tiles here. All right. So we've got our bags here. Bag, bag, our decks. Okay. It looks like they're just kind of showing like everything around the board. Grandpa's goals are up in the corner. We've got our community center bundles with our face down cards. Starting off the season with our one parsnip, as it told us. And here's our forageable spots. So like river fishing right here's a forageable spot i can see a little mushroom there i see a tree so that would be our tree spot okay like map cards it's just showing us how to lay out what might work best oh, i think the purple one the purple icon is the spouse pond so it looks like i'm going to be everyone's spouse in the game that's all i'm playing well goals and bundles there are two types of objectives grandpa's goals and the bundles we went over that together. Bundles start out as hidden. So it's just talking about the bundles again. The fish tank requires certain types of fish obtained by fishing at the lake, river, or ocean. Important legendary fish can be donated to any fishing bundle. Bulletin board requires different types of goods as well. Important 
progress toward the bundles require a heart token and one resource per player. Okay. The vault requires donations of gold. Remember, these amounts are multiplied by the number of players. So if like 10 gold and you have four players, that's going to be uh, 40 gold. That's crazy. That's a lot of gold just for one card. Boiler room requires mine resources like ore, minerals, or bug meat. So, how to play? Quickly going into it. So, season phase, draw a season card and carry out its instructions. So, like if we were playing in spring right now, first card on the top, flower dance. Each player with a friend gains a heart token. That's one of the non standard cards. It's a standard one. So, and then there's a planning phase. Players discuss their plans and place their pawns at any location. Okay, cool. So there's no, like, rolling to get somewhere. Action phase. Begin with the starting player. Each player takes a turn. When the turn is complete, place your pawn back in the farmhouse. You may then choose one type of end-of-turn effect listed on the board beside the farmhouse and trigger it as much as you are able. See page 20 for further details. Once each player has taken a turn, the round ends and a new round begins. The game ends when players complete their objectives, victory, or when the season card is drawn. Jo the final season card is one. JoJo has one. So in the season phase, uh, you know, the player with the pet token draws a season card and follows its instructions from the top of the deck. Festival cards have a single effect written on the card, whereas each regular season card shows a unique sequence of icons. Each icon triggers an effect. So for instance, the one I drew here, as an example, has the green crow at the top so choose one of your crops in a green field to be discarded note field three is both red and green red crow choose one of your red crops so if i was doing this so i would have green crow so i'd be getting rid of one of my green crops which would be the parsnip because that'd be in two so we would have lost our parsnip right off the top um gift each player chooses one of their befriended villagers and activates their gift ability then trigger the effect of all non-villager cards with gift symbols and then we've got an event, draw an event card and resolve it. So if I did that, you know, uh, event, uh, traveling merchant, keep, discard at the river fishing space to gain two items. So I could hold on to that and get river fishing updates later. And then the last one is the shipping bin. Players may trade and sell resources. All right. So that would be phase one, right? And then now would be the planning phase where players discuss their plans and place their pawns at any location. And then it would be the action phase where players take their turn. So for instance, if it was just me playing, because you can play this by yourself, which if you guys want to see, let me know. I'll do it. Uh, players may trade item cards or resource tiles during this phase, as well as discuss their intentions for the turn. Each player then places their pawn onto any location. This does not count as movement. Once everyone is happy with the placement, proceed to the action phase. So we can trade item cards or resource tiles during this phase. So I'm, I'm assuming that means with each other, so like you and I. And then we'd go to the action phase. So players take action to move on the board. The starting player, play with the pet token, begins and must finish all their actions before the next player starts their turn. Play proceeds clockwise. Players choose during their turn how they would like to carry out their actions. They may either do an action and an action, so take two actions at your current location. No movement is allowed, unless by using some special ability, or you can do action, move, action. Take an action at your current location, then move one space along the path, and then take an action at your new location. So for instance, just using what we have here, if we start off at the river fishing, I could take two fishing actions, or I could take a fishing action and move over here and buy an animal, or, let's see if I can catch it here, ah, or I can water the crops. I can come up here and water the crops. That would be the two different types of actions I could take if I started at river fishing. When you complete your last action, you return your pawn to the farmhouse and may trigger any one end of turn effects as... Wait. May trigger any one end of turn effects effect as much as you like. Once everyone has gone, the round ends. So the end of turn effects, like right here, so you could build stairs, pet animals, remove JoJo, or upgrade starting tool. Okay. So movement. Movement allows foraging. Whenever a player moves their pawn along a path, they may, don't have to, may take one of the face down forageables or tree tiles, not both, from an area that shares a border with that path that is automatic 
and does not count against the allowance of the two actions per turn. Most forgeable tiles and some trees can be harvested from more than one path. If you reveal a worm tile, look at the icon at the bottom right and see if you've got an artifact or a mineral. Discard the card and draw an artifact and mineral bag and keep the resource type that was specified. Perfect. So it's just showing us the actions in detail. Buy animals, river fishing, buy and plant seeds, make a friend, reveal and donate to bundles, ocean fishing, donate to the museum, open geodes, lake fishing, buy buildings, explore the mine, collect from animals, and water crops. So when you take an action, you may choose from any of the available actions at your current location. A player may change their mind from what they declared in the planning phase. This is okay. Although a player may not want to change their location now via, except via movement during their turn or by using a special ability. A player is not required to take an action. Note that some abilities require you to spend an action to use them. This can be done from any location unless otherwise specified. The location represents the town. Here, players can visit Pierre's General Store, the Community Center, or the Star Drop Saloon. Cool. So, water crops, farm action. Spend an action to move all crops currently planted in the field slots one space to the right. If a crop moves off the track, it is harvested and goes into your inventory. If you have no inventory space, you must first discard a resource to make a room. To make room. When watered all plants, move one space to the right. Crows. Crows. Crops never wither, but can be eaten by crows. When a crow icon appears on the season board, choose a crop to get rid of. We've already done that. We already looked at that. So collect from animals. Spend an action to roll three animal dice. Each animal tile you own generates a resource of each type of each time, and it is activated. <clears throat> An animal tile is activated once for each die that matches its icon. For example, if players have two cows, a roll of one cow icon would grant two milks, a roll of two cow icons would grant four milks, and so on. Happy animals. Animals flipped to their happy side generate quality animal resources. Animals can be flipped to the happy side by an end of turn effect. See page 20. Uh, by animals, so... You know, building required for chickens, for instance, you need to have a coop. Number of hearts you must discard to flip over to the happy side. It says one for that. Resource generated every time. The egg icon that must be rolled to activate the animal. The chicken and the cost to buy the animal for the chicken. It's six gold. Pretty self-explanatory game. Buy and plant seeds is the town action. So, And you can see the watering crop shows which numbered field it goes to. And then the value when sold. So spend an action to visit the shop. Boom, 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 boom. Seeds, crop tiles of the current season only cost one gold each and are planted immediately upon purchase into an empty field. The crop's watering cost shows which number of field it must be placed into. Normally only one crop tile may be in each field slot. No stacking. Well, at Pierre's, you can also sell any resource from your inventory for gold. This may be done in any order with planting seeds. On most turns, you'll be able to sell goods via the shipping bin on season cards, but sometimes that isn't available, in which case you'll want to use this action if needed. So make a friend. <clears throat> Penny loves crops. Penny hates ores. Indicates that they can be married if they have the rainbow shell. And the gift ability is gain a heart. <clears throat> to make a friend, spend an action in town and take the top card of the deck. If you're able and wish to do so, gift them a resource to make them your friend. Otherwise, discard them. So you have to make them your friend by giving them a gift. Give a gift, discard a resource from your inventory, and then keep the villager card and earn heart tokens. So for instance, for Penny, like we said, she likes crops, so we have to give her a crop. So a parsnip. How many heart tokens you earn depends on the gift type and the current season. So loved is two hearts. Liked, a giftable resource not pictured on the card earns one heart. Or hated, cannot be gifted. So like for Penny, she loves crops, so you'd get two hearts. And she hates four geodes, minerals, and, um, I, and um, relics. If it's not an ore, geode, mineral, or relic, you can give it to her. And you'll get one heart. If you give her a crop, you'll get two hearts. Okay. In the current season that matches their birthday, you gain an extra heart. So if you gave it to her in the fall, you'd get an extra heart. Cool. Reveal and donate bundles. That's just part of a card. Open geodes as a forge action. Gain a stone. Gain a specific ore. Gain a mineral. Gain an artifact. Gain an item. 
donate to the museum, self-explanatory, buy buildings, the mountain action. If you don't have enough materials, wooden, stone, and gold, you may visit Robin and construct via buildings. Spend an action, discard the number of required materials and gold listed on any building you wish to construct, then take the appropriate tiles, okay? Explore the mine. So, the mine is a resource for stones, ores, blah, blah, blah. The current map card shows what the outcome of your roll would be. Use the results of your roll to indicate a row and a column. You choose which die is used for the column and which is the row. Trigger. Wait, so if you roll the star drop and a heart, you could gain one item or an or. Okay, so you roll both dice and you decide which combination you want them. So like it's saying here, if you roll the star drop and a heart, right here, you can get an or, or you can go the other way and get an item. Okay, so stone is a gain of stone, but sometimes too. Bug meat or geode staircase descend and reveal the next mine. Items gain an item. Monster trigger the monster ability on the current mine level card. Mine event, draw mine event card. Okay. So like for instance, the skeleton here and the ghost for that for level eight, you lose an item if you hit the monster ability card. That's cool. Fishing. Fishing allows you to catch fish and occasionally gain items. To fish, visit one of the three fishing locations. Fish track. To catch a fish, you must be in the fishing location matching one of the fish on the fish track. Uh, denoted by their tile colors and icons. Yep, so you can see that there. And then fulfill the catch requirement to claim tiles. After each fishing action is completed, slide tiles to the right to fill empty slots and fill many empty slots from the fishing bag. So there are two fish available in the lake. Two in the ocean and one in the river. How to catch a fish. When you take a fishing action, roll all three Stardew dice. Each die generates one symbol, heart, Junimo, or star drop. To catch a fish in the same location you are, spend the symbols from the rolled dice to success or to fulfill the catch requirements of one or more fish on the fish track. It is possible to catch more than one fish, but remember that each die can only be put towards a single fish. Okay. Oh, I see. So... Hard to see it on here, but for the red mullet, it shows in the description. The catch requirements are a heart and a Junimo. So if you rolled heart, Junimo, and star drop, you could catch that by using the heart and the Junimo. And legendary fish require like a star drop, for instance. So with that roll, you could catch the red mullet and a legend fish if it was available in that same fishing location. They are caught like normal fish. The major difference is that legend fish are never discarded from the fish track due to fish track movement from season cards. If fish track movement would push them off the board and said return to the fishing bag. When sold or donated or gifted, they are discarded as usual. So then there's a crab pot. Treat like all other fish, except that they are not caught using stardew dice. Instead, during a fishing action, for every bug meat you discard, you may take a crab pot fish that matches your current fishing location. Okay, so it's just like crab pot fishing. Trash! If you catch no fish of any kind, you may take a trash tile from the fishing track. Trash is not generally useful, but removing it frees up a slot from the fishing track. And like all tiles can be discarded from your inventory whenever you wish. Treasure chests. Uh, if you catch a fish to the immediately to the immediate left of the treasure chest tile, discard the chest tile and gain an item. Okay. That's cool. And the fishing bag contains them all. Boop. And then the end of turn effects. So, when a player triggers the end of their turn, returning to the farmhouse, they may choose one type of end of turn effect to trigger. The player may perform this effect as many times as they are able. Build staircase. Discard a number of stone equal to the number of players to descend in the mines. Pet animals. Discard the amount of heart tokens that is equal to the number of hearts displayed on an owned animal tile to flip it to its happy side. Remove Joja. Remo discard a heart token or five gold to remove a Jojo tile. And upgrade starting tool. Discard the resource listed on your starting tool to advance it to the next level. And then it just goes on telling us about the starting tools in the inventory. They tell you what they do. The season end cards. Uh, the resource tiles. It's just kind of like listing the tiles here. Jojo tiles. Occasionally a season card will call for a Jojo tile to be drawn in place. To do this, draw from the stack. And reveal it. The icon shows which board action it affects. So... And from now on, it will alter or possibly block the target action until it is removed. So like permit required. No fishing allowed at the lake. That's a JoJo tile. Sounds awful. Profession upgrades. 
Each player gains a profession upgrade at the end of each season. These upgrades may not be traded, and each player may only ever have two. If you gain a double-sided card, please choose which side is up and therefore active. Cards with gift abilities are triggered when the gift ability shows on a season card. So you can adjust the game difficulty too. That's crazy. Man, there is so much depth in this game. Seed Seedling is great. Oh, hold on. My microphone's a little off from where I'm looking here. Sorry, guys. Seedling is a is great for teaching game or striving for a personal record without the stress. Complete four of Grandpa's goals only. Honest Farmer is the standard way to play. Complete four of Grandpa's goals. Complete six bundles, one per room, to restore all six community centers. An Artisan is the advanced mode providing experienced players with the greatest challenge. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's us. Uh, artisan. Complete four of the bundles. Complete of grandpa's goals complete six bundles one per room to restore them all and no jo no jojo tiles remain on the board it sounds easy but i bet that's harder than it sounds and then adjusting the game length a normal game that spans the entire year with 20 cards in deck usually takes about 40 minutes per player if you desire a quicker game try this each season only has two season cards instead of four okay in addition to the season end card only reveal and complete two of grandpa's goals instead of two Randomly choose three community center rooms and place bundles face down for them. Community center is considered restored after these three bundles are completed. Solo play rules. Uh, the board game is easily playable solo. The only difference is with professions. You are not limited to the profession on your player mat. Instead, when you gain a profession upgrade at the end of the season, draw three cards from any combination of the four profession decks and reveal them simultaneously. And you can choose one to keep and discard the other. So you can not be focused as just a farmer, for instance. And then it's just showing the phases of the round. It's just a quick rules reference, which will be great just to keep open on the board. Quick common questions. Getting married. In order to get married, you must first gain the mermaid's pendant epic item. You may attach it to one of your villager friends who displays that icon. You are now married. Take the spouse pawn. During the planning phase, you may put the spouse pawn on any one space. During your turn, your spouse may take one action at their location before or after you've taken all your actions. They have access to your inventory of resources as well as any cards and abilities you possess. Spouse may not trigger end of turn effects. Wow, so the spouse is actually useful in this game. But I'm sad that there are no children that we can turn into doves. That's my only complaint so far. But yeah, guys, so this is the Stardew Valley board game. Let me know what you guys think about it down below, and if you do want to see a little playthrough of it, I'll definitely give it a whirl with you guys, and I'll try and set this up a little bit better next time, so that way it's a bit cleaner, and you can actually see what I'm doing a bit better as well. But this is the Stardew Valley board game, and I'm excited to play it with some friends. It's a nice co-op game, it looks like, and I just love the amount of depth into it and just how much it relates to Stardew Valley. Because you know how sometimes games get, like, you make a board game about something and it's not really the same thing at all. It's just kind of like a rehash of something old and with a nice rebranding of Stardew in this instance. But it's not. It's unique. It's a very individualistic type game. It is Stardew Valley, the board game. So I'm very excited to try this out. You guys let me know down below what you think of it as well. Leave me a comment. Tell me if you're going to pick up the game. I'll leave a link down below to where you can buy the game as well if you're interested. I believe it was 55 US dollars, give or take. I'm not too sure off the top of my head. I believe it was $9 shipping as well to get it to uh, the Northeast US. But all right, guys, this is your Shabby experience, your very first Shabby board game experience. And as usual, this has been Shabby Do, and I hope the rest of your day is not too shabby.